the raid by U.S. Special Operations Forces that left one American dead from ISIS gunfire was the first U.S. military death by enemy action in this war, several military officials tell CNN. Remarkably, a mission that President Obama did not sign off on. Well, I believe the uh, Defense Department has said that uh, the Secretary of Defense authorized this mission. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter's press secretary defending the decision to help Kurdish commanders close U.S. allies. This was a, a unique circumstance in which uh, very close partners of the United States made a specific request uh, for our assistance. The Pentagon says Carter approved the mission because the Kurds wanted to free prisoners facing imminent execution. Satellite imagery showed mass graves had already been dug. But none of the freed prisoners appear to be Kurds. You went on a hostage rescue mission and you didn't know who was going to be there? We did not have a full accounting of everyone present at this compound. That is correct. The Pentagon adamant the operation was not mission creep and did not violate the president's ban on combat by U.S. forces. The U.S. Special Operations Forces were supposed to use their helicopters to just fly Iraqi Kurdish forces to the ISIS jail in northern Iraq. But there was one secret clause. If the Iraqis started to come under heavy attack, U.S. troops had the authority to step in and help, essentially putting themselves in combat against ISIS. That is exactly what happened when heavy gunfire broke out on the ground just after initial military action. Nearby, U.S. warplanes had just dropped bombs on makeshift ISIS training camps, staging sites, and bridges in the area. Then five helicopters brought in nearly 70 U.S. Special Forces, Iraqi, and Kurdish troops. They approached the compound, and that firefight broke out. Keep going! When the mission was over, the U.S. aircraft overhead destroyed the site. The U.S. service member was badly wounded inside the compound during the firefight. He was airlifted to Erbil in northern Iraq and later died of his wounds at a battlefield trauma center there.